Love them or hate them, when it comes to a friendly conversation, these stars aren't exactly the gold standard. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst late night talk show guests. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at celebrities who've been invited to late night talk shows and have regularly shown to be difficult or standoffish guests. Number 10, Joaquin Phoenix. Okay, so the dude's won an Oscar and he is certainly talented, but it just might be possible that Joaquin Phoenix holds himself in slightly too high a regard. And you were terrific in the film. I really enjoyed your work. Thank you. Though notoriously self-serious and elusive, Phoenix saw his reputation take a major beating after he appeared on David Letterman in Jet Black Wayfarers and a full mountain man beard. What, uh, what can you tell us about your days with the Unabomber? He later said it was for a piece of performance art related to a film he was working on, but that doesn't change just how awkward the interview was. Clearly, Phoenix does better with a script in his hand than on live TV. Number 9. Donald Trump Donald Trump has earned himself a reputation for being bullish and arrogant, and it happened long before he was elected president. been abused for a long time at the border. Oh, oh, You're going to pay on. for the wall. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. Just so you understand. His pompous and braggadocious manner has historically rubbed hosts the wrong way, but we suppose that's part of what made him appealing to unhappy voters. Things only got worse as he began his political campaign, as he dialed his rhetoric up to 11 with that unapologetic smirk. I just want to see something different for our country, and I feel very strongly about it, and I guess a lot of people agree with me. While most hosts don't seem to appreciate him and the style he brings to interviews, he does attract viewers and has loyal supporters throughout the country. Number 8. Paris Hilton Paris is a bit of a strange case. She's great at talking about herself, but seems unable to talk about the things that make her famous. Uh, have your friends treated you differently since you've been out of the slammer? Case in point, when interviewers try to broach subjects she's not down with, she becomes very closed off and resorts to one or two word answers. But I've moved on with my life, so I don't really want to talk about it yeah, anymore. But, uh, For late night hosts, watching her do an impression of a shy six year old doesn't do much for the show, and interviews often get understandably awkward. I'm here for my clothing line and my movie and my perfume. I'm not here to talk about that. If you're wondering how she feels about the interview herself, though, don't worry, she'll let you know. Now you're making me sad that I came because you're Oh, no, 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 please, oh, no, please, don't, don't be sad. Are you really sad? No. Number 7. Kristen Stewart In recent years, Stewart has taken on more diverse roles to really showcase her talent. Back in her Twilight days, though, her role as Bella overshadowed all else, and her talk show attitude did her no favors in terms of winning the public over. <laughs> yeah, um, I... It's it's a it's a funny thing. The, the, I I realized that I really loved acting um, on on a on a movie that was I was 13 already. I started acting when I was nine. When the most popular thing to your name is a teen vampire drama, coming off as spacey and too cool for the room makes for some awkward interview encounters. Horror? Would you call it suspense? What would you call it? Um, it, yeah, I mean, I, I guess people are calling it like a thriller. We know being on TV can't be easy, but being genuine and just having a casual conversation with the host goes a lot further than being evasive and distant. She has seemingly improved over the years, but her reputation continues to follow her. Number 6. Casey Affleck Talk shows are a great opportunity to showcase that you're a relatable celebrity and to simultaneously promote your movie with a quiet ease. It's just water. Did you want uh, something no, better than I'm, water? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Instead, Casey Affleck took his appearance on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert to essentially recreate Joe Pesci's scene from Goodfellas. Um, we actually have a, we have a clip here with you and I'm, Anthony Mackie. Oh, okay. We don't have... What? Do you, do you want to say something before we go to the clip? It's probably no surprise that Casey Affleck had a hand in the film that resulted in Joaquin Phoenix's disastrous talk show appearances. Because based on his own track record, Affleck has clearly mastered the art of appearing arrogant and standoffish in his interviews. Number 5. Andy Kaufman no one here is denying that Andy Kaufman was hilarious. Uh, tell me about that. <laughs> Although his talent took on some rather challenging forms, his commitment to his comedic bits is unrivaled to this day. Mm, mm, not really much. I'm just staying. I'm living in New York now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, but things are things are okay. That's a hell of a double-edged sword, though as that same commitment, more often than not, resulted in his talk show appearances being somewhere between bewildering and downright cringeworthy. I don't, I don't want to sit out here and pretend that I'm friends with this guy because I think he's a wimp. 
Appearing on Letterman throughout the early 80s made for a slew of appearances that in hindsight were hilarious, but in the moment must have been incredibly taxing for all parties involved. Number 4. Robert De Niro The Dude's a Legend Known for his tough guy attitude in films, De Niro does seem like the kind of guy who'd be telling kids to get off his lawn. It's easy to apply words like curmudgeon to someone like that, but at the same time, you gotta respect a guy who doesn't enjoy flaunting his fame. Do you do, uh, do, you do like a classic uh, Italian Christmas, like, like a seven fish or whatever the thing is? No, I do things with family and stuff, I try. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, that's kinda what talk shows are for. Needless to say, De Niro and talk shows are less of a De Niro-Pacino combination and more of a De Niro-Stiller combo. To silence. Silence. <laughs> They're fun in a passing manner, but you can't really shake the feeling that this legendary actor isn't really there by choice. Do you play video games? No. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't. <laughs> Have you ever played video games? Pac-Man. Number 3. Crispin Glover Very few people can make a career out of being weird, but Crispin Glover has. Say what you will about his acting ability or his career in film choices. Uh, a couple I'm of weeks strong. ago, there you he know, is. I'm strong. I can arm wrestle. I don't know. Do you want to arm wrestle? No. I've been taking. No, no I've been taking part. These aren't mine. The fact remains that while it's easy to write off his appearances as in character performances to promote upcoming movie roles, Glover's commitment to the performance was enough to make Letterman walk out of his show. Seriously, it's his show. After the infamous high kick incident, Glover returned to Letterman's show at a later date. It's too bad for you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, 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 I, 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 it's, uh, I'm, <laughs> right, just, I, just relax. I, I'm just... However, when questioned about his earlier appearance, he was no less cryptic. At least he was better behaved, though. Number two, Andy Dick. Another comedian who likes to push the limits and take his audience in some rather uncomfortable directions, Andy Dick unsurprisingly makes for an uncomfortable interviewee. Please, don't, 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 Donald Trump will kill both of us. One notable incident occurred on Jimmy Kimmel Live, in which he was on the couch alongside Ivanka Trump. Andy, slurring his words a tad, got a little handsy with Ivanka, creepily running his hand over her legs. After being asked to stop in the friendliest possible manner by Kimmel, Dick pushed the host's patience too far and was escorted offset by security. Number 1. Bill O'Reilly You'd think that with a show of his own, he'd be a little more affable when appearing on the television work of his contemporaries. But before he lost that show due to a history of sexual harassment, though, Bill O'Reilly brought the same bullish and argumentative behavior he displayed on his own show to every talk show he appeared on. Killing the rising sun, that's kind of vague. Is killing... It's Japan! What's wrong with you? Never one to just shoot the breeze, O'Reilly would show up on the likes of Letterman and Colbert basically wearing boxing gloves. If Clark Gable, Dave, and I know you feel the same way, if Clark Gable had cozy it up to Francisco Franco in the 30s, I wouldn't have got to see Gone with the Wind. Known for having a habit of losing his temper, it's amazing he kept getting invited back to events like this. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.